Tuesday afternoon at 4 p.m. in Switzerland. It's Space Cafe Web Talk time. Our Space Cafe Web Talk, 33 minutes with Dr. Natalia Aginhat, will begin soon. Thank you for joining us for this very informative and definitely very inspiring talk today about Switzerland's commitment to space sustainability. As always, we appreciate your participation and your ongoing feedback. I'm Thorsten Kreening, your host today and publisher of spacewatch.global. We are a Switzerland-based online platform for information in and about space and new space activities in a geopolitical context. I know many of you are already familiar with our website, our bi-weekly and weekly newsletters and the Space Cafe podcast. Our episode 11 featuring Sarah Langston about space education and space security is out and it's worth listening. We also opened our fan shop online where you can support us directly and become a space watcher. Edition one has cool mugs, masks and awesome t-shirts for you, your friends and the one you love. Your support is needed to keep our independent journalism alive. If you have missed any of the previous web talks, we have an archive available on our webpage in the events section and on YouTube. We host our Space Cafe web talks live on a weekly base. This is already the 26th edition and we keep on going. I hope you mark Tuesdays at the same time in your calendars. Um, with that, I'm very proud and welcome you, Natalia, in my show. Great to have you. Thank you so much, Torsten. It's a real pleasure to be here with you and share a coffee over half an hour. <laughs> Thank Absolutely. you for having Absolutely. me. It's a pleasure. So let's talk about Switzerland's commitment to space sustainability as it is the title. May you start with your definition of space sustainability and what the commitment is? Yeah, thank you very much, Torsten, for this opportunity. So I'd like, I'd like to be faithful uh, to the UN because uh, the UN General Assembly has uh, endorsed the definition of uh, the sustainability of space activities um, developed uh, by COPUOS. And I will read it not one to one, but just to give you a flavor. Uh, space sustainability is defined, or I should be precise, the sustainability of space activities is defined uh, as the abil ability to maintain the conduct of space activities indefinitely in the future in a manner that preserves uh, or ensures equitable access to the benefits of space exploration and use and that meets the needs of present generation while preserving outer space environment for future generation. And I think these uh, elements are very important. And, and uh, as I was saying, I'm, I'm obviously faith, faithful to this definition. Uh, and so is Switzerland, which participated in the development of the guidelines on the long-term sustainability. Now, personally, I like to see the sustainability of space activities enshrined in a more global concept of sustainability and especially uh, linked to the uh, UN agenda for sustainable development because uh, space technologies are uh, very precious tools to help implement the, uh, the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. And also, um, we cannot speak of uh, a sustainable earth environment if we do not have a sustainable space environment. Okay. So because they are very in, uh, closely linked uh, together. Um, and as a third element, I'd like to mention that the sustainability, uh, there is no sustainability, there won't be sustainability in space if there is no security, if there is no peace in space. So hence, it's very, very extremely important to also maintain uh, security and space uh, as uh, security in space and space as a conflict free environment in order to ensure uh, for safe uh, space operations, for instance. Um, another commitment, I think you, you, you asked for the commitment of, of Switzerland uh, to, to space sustainability. 
And um, yes, maybe at the, as a start, it's important to 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 mention that uh, Switzerland, as a, an industrialized country, very much relies on space technologies for its well-being, for its economy, for its society, and the fun functioning of its institutions. So that's why Switzerland has uh, a very um, has a, a great stake at maintain, maintaining or ensuring that the space environment is maintained. Uh, 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 stable, uh, safe, secure, and usable on the long term. That's why Switzerland's engage in um, in uh, at diplomatic level in the intergovernmental discussions uh, to uh, promote uh, the the long term sustainability of space activities. And indeed, Switzerland has been very active, uh, be it at COPWAS uh, and in other. Uh, UN fora uh, who also deal with uh, space with the aim to maintain uh, space as a stable and safe environment. And uh, well, at national level, uh, we are also we have a lot of uh, entities working a bit at the research level or also technology development level, working on uh, research, for instance, on space debris uh, or development of technologies uh, in the direction of active debris removal, uh, all sorts of um, uh, areas which contribute to uh, sustainability of space activities. And it's it's a great pleasure and see here on the attendees list are to, to welcome also from the University of Bern, Thomas Schildknecht, who is oh. at the forefront of, of space security and also uh, Tatjana from the uh, Space Center. I, at least these are the uh, two names I, I recognized if there are other people from, from this organization here in the audience, so highly welcomed as, as well. But Natalia, um, can we talk about your work as the chair of the scientific and technical subcommittee of UN Copius in this very unique, very, on the other side, also very space active and very challenging year, as we all know. What are the challenges you faced in, or in, 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 in your job or at the UN and what happened and mm. what will happen next year? Because the, the virus is not over, as we all unfortunately mm -hmm. see right now. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Torsten, for addressing uh, this uh, indeed uh, big challenge, which is, I mean, the, the pandemic, the COVID pandemic is obviously mm -hmm. a huge challenge for humanity and in all sectors. And uh, it is certainly a challenge for multilateralism also, because um, as we uh, all know, uh, in pretty much everywhere around the world, um, big conferences are just not taking place anymore. And when you think of how the intergovernmental work is, is um, being conducted, uh, the importance of in-person contacts among delegates, uh, representatives from different governments, uh, well, as soon as you don't, cannot have those contacts anymore, then the common work is almost, I wouldn't say impossible, but extremely difficult to conduct uh, with success. So multilateral negotiations, political work um, is very much based on, on trust among uh, different uh, uh, parties. And uh, this trust cannot be, or is very difficult to build uh, at least on pers personal level um, in a remote manner. I mean, Torsten, it's so good. We know each other. We've been knowing uh, each other for long and, and it's so easy now to talk this way yeah. uh, in a remote manner uh, over the internet. But if we didn't know each other, it would be much more difficult to speak in such a confidence together. So um, the, the UN is, is facing and, and several international organizations are facing this huge challenges not mm. to be able to uh, organize uh, huge conferences. Um, and indeed, that's what happened uh, for COP was also this year. So as chair of the scientific and technical subcommittee, which is the first one to meet during the year, mm -hmm. I was extremely lucky that the, the STSC session, so scientific and technical subcommittee session, could take place. That was in February, just before uh, the, the pandemic really started spreading over the world. Um, so I was lucky enough as chair of SDSC to, to have a full session in person, almost like normal in Vienna. Um, 
and and we could uh, go through our agenda and conduct the intergovernmental negotiations in person. Uh, but then the legal subcommittee didn't have this, this chance. It was supposed to meet uh, uh, over March and April, two weeks. And the, co uh, the main COP was in June, they could not meet either. So the challenge is now how to uh, continue uh, the intergovernmental work when we are not able to meet in person. The question is obviously what can we do through um, uh, electronic means, right? Uh, can we co continue um, uh, intergovernmental negotiation using internet? Uh, well, uh, several organizations are, are trying to find uh, solutions for that. Um, we in at COPUOS, uh, we uh, member states of COPUOS were trying also to find solutions, but there was um, uh, no consensus for among all states that we could continue address political issues in a remote manner, uh, because delegations countries want to uh, be able to send their experts uh, to the room mm. where the discussion is taking place. Uh, and as long as uh, uh, we cannot all travel, and I shall say at the same time from every region in the world uh, to Vienna, then how are we going to uh, pursue this inter intergovernmental work um, in the coming month and maybe years? So and as chair of the scientific and technical subcommittee, that's a uh, a big concern for me uh, for the next session, which is supposed to take place um, in February uh, 2021. But I mean, the, the outlook is, 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 is not very positive right now. And I mean, February, at least here in Germany, the, the, the first events are, are called off. I mean, I don't want to mention Carnival in comparison with uh, with the, uh, with the with the work at the UN, but at least it's a huge event, and uh, it's it's about mm. to to get called off. So it's it's not very likely. So, but does mm. it mean we have this vacuum? I mean, on the other side, and that's what I'm concerned of, and maybe you shared it. We have parties uh, it, active in the space sector which are super active right now. Mm. Mm. So they are mm. not waiting that the pandemic goes away. I mean, mainly China, mainly mainly the U US. Uh, from both sides, we see an increased level of activities. Mm. No, absolutely, uh, absolutely. And uh, so indeed, <laughs> the intergovernmental work is uh, somehow uh, suspended, but uh, space uh, um, activities are not. Maybe some developments are slowed down, but I mean, uh, mm. missions are continuing and, uh, and that is good so, right? But. I agree with you. It is important that the uh, COP was the intergovernmental body responsible for space, uh, for the peaceful users of outer space, uh, is able to continue its work. Uh, so, as I was saying, uh, I think it's it's uh, it's very much important, uh, and uh, I'm still confident we will find solutions. Uh, we found, and we we will have, and I hope state there will be consensus on a new way to work together even if we cannot be all in person in mm. Vienna uh, so I think in the next in the coming month I will be working on that with uh, other uh, with delegations as chair of the, of the scientific and technical subcommittee I will be working with interested delegations and obviously with the secretariat with you and yes. OSA on uh, finding trying to find a way to keep the work going that's for sure yeah. just also for your information the status so we had cancellation of the two sessions i mentioned to you the legal subcommittee and cop was this year um, we didn't find a way to uh, meet virtually or in a hybrid manner partly in vienna partly uh, in the capitals but we um, cop was is in the process of taking uh, decisions in a through a written procedure so that it can send those decisions to the General Assembly for endorsement by the General Assembly because COPWOS uh, and its bodies will need uh, to receive the mandate by the General Assembly mm. to be able to work next year. So that's yeah. happening these weeks, really. Great. At least there's some progress and I'm happy to hear that. Let's take a, mo uh, an, a moment on the topic of sustainability. I mean, you mentioned it earlier, uh, it's inherent linked to security on earth and in space 
without any doubt. Mm -hmm. What are the other initiatives or are you able to, to mention a few other initiatives are, that you are aware of that dealing with these topics? Mm. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think, yes, yeah, so, so it, that, that is a huge topic in itself <laughs> and I'm glad yeah. you addressed it. Uh, so, um, indeed, um, as you say, I mean, the security, and as I said also in introduction, uh, uh, security, there cannot be any sustainability in space without security, without mm. a stability in space. And uh, such topics have been addressed uh, or are addressed by the United Nations at the General Assembly and also in the, the Conference on Disarmament at yeah. the UN uh, Disarmament Commission, uh, where they address uh, uh, security in space through the angle of uh, arms control, um, international security. Um, so, yes, I think uh, to answer your question, um, the, the the, I've heard of, a, of, a, of a, an initiative from uh, UK, United yep. Kingdom, uh, who is um, uh, thinking of uh, proposing a, a new draft resolution to the General Assembly um, in uh, this year. So, and, and the subject uh, is uh, on uh, reducing threats through responsible behavior. So it's about uh, understanding uh, or having a sharing of uh, views among member states on what is uh, conceived as a threat mm -hmm. to uh, space activities and uh, what should be um, considered as, as a re responsible behavior to improve, uh, uh, to improve stable conduct uh, or safe conduct of space activities, stability and increase confidence and, and transparency among uh, member states, among space actors in this case, really. So I think that's a, that's a, a good initiative. I, I think it will be supported by Switzerland, which I'm uh, very happy with. And, um, and maybe to give you another example, because there are a lot of, um, of uh, entities uh, working on, on those questions, and I'm thinking of uh, recent work done by UNIDIR, the UN mm -hmm. Institute for Disarmament Research, which, which is located in Geneva, and they, for instance, proposed uh, norms for ASAT, anti-satellite uh, weapon. Uh, and it's it's very uh, it's quite interesting because they, they came up with I mean. Uh, it's, it's three three um, uh, slogans. Uh, either no debris at all. That if you need to really, if we really need, need to do an asset test, please do it with very low debris. And in any case, please notify what you are going to do, so that uh, other states are not caught by surprise. And 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 that's a contribution to more confidence or less in confidence. Let's put it this way. So the, such kind of activities uh, of, sorry, initiatives, uh, I mm -hmm. think are very valuable. And, and I wish um, uh, states could reflect on, on how, on them, on how to implement those proposals. Okay. So, I mean, as, as I read your introduction earlier, you worked actively on the 21 LTS guidelines that were adopted or after a 10 year negotiation process by consensus last year at Copius. We reported about it and I think that's great. That's a great achievement. So next level now is the national implementation, of course. Um, so could you elaborate a bit on, on your country, Switzerland, a bit um, how you move on or on that topic? Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, indeed. So, indeed, the first, as you mentioned, after 10 years of work, uh, COPWAS agrees on 25 guidelines uh, to promote the long-term sustainability of space activities. Can Wasn't you hear 20, me? 20, 21? Did I say 21? Yes. No, 20, 25. I thought you upgraded ah. it already. No, but it's, it's just 21, yeah? It's 21. I just said okay, 25. Good. I'm sorry. No, no. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> I think we agree. It's 21. You, it's about, uh, sorry about my mistake. Um, yes. 21 guidelines. Um, and, and next steps, as you say, is the implementation. Mm. Uh, 
I, must, I, I want to start with, before speaking of the space of the case of Switzerland, I'd like to start with by saying it's also implementation at multilateral level. And at the same time, COP was agreed on these 21 guidelines. It agrees to establish a new working group mm -hmm. to help in the implementation of the 21 guidelines and also to address new challenges to uh, space uh, sustainability and to promote capacity building in those areas. So I think it's, it's a very good move by COPWORS, a very good decision by COPWORS to continue the work and to help states implement those guidelines. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to uh, the work of this new working group, which was somehow delayed, should have started working this year, was not possible to find consensus on who could, would lead or the composition of the bureau which would lead this group. So this, this discussion is postponed to uh, next year at the SDSC session. But in any case, uh, in Switzerland, we have started uh, beginning our reflections on uh, how to, um, to establish a national legal framework, how to accompany the development of uh, space activities by the private actors based in Switzerland. And uh, I must say in this respect that uh, Switzerland um, has conducted most of, of its space activities through ESA, of which it is a founding member, uh, and meaning for decades and until very recently, all space activities by private, I mean, Swiss actors who are involved in space program through ESA. So where you, we had the full framework, uh, legal framework accompanying the, the, the activities. And I must, I want to emphasize here that uh, ESA is a very responsible actor in, in space and is implementing already the, the, the long-term sustainability guidelines. Well, at national level, um, we may not uh, yet uh, implement all guidelines, but we're still implementing some. And uh, I want to, uh, for instance, uh, refer to uh, uh, the use of radio frequency spectrum. Uh, Switzerland is a member of ITU and fully abide by ITU uh, convention and the radio regulations so that uh, space operations are conducted without interferences with other missions. Um, Switzerland has very, very various entities uh, very much active in research and international mm -hmm. cooperation in this respect, being on, be it on space debris. And you mentioned uh, Professor Thomas Schilknecht, the head of the uh, observatory of Zimmerwald, who is a leading institution in, uh, on space debris observation and orbit character, characterizations. And, um, and and uh, there are also various entities in Switzerland working on space weather. And all those elements, I mean, they are part of the guidelines. Uh, promoting research, knowledge, mm. exchange of information, of data, uh, improving the precision of uh, the orbit, the knowledge of, of the, the objects in space. Uh, all this is part of the guidelines. So this is, this is, these are areas where Switzerland is very active. Um, yeah, and at a uh, diplomatic level, if I may emphasize, we, we have also been active um, uh, convening uh, workshops, discussions, exchanges with other states uh, pertaining to the implementation uh, of the guidelines. So exchange of information, what are the difficulties, which are, which are the questions which arise. And this is also part of the guideline. I think it's guideline uh, B, no, wait, wait, wait. I have not, not written it, sorry, I don't have it here, the number, but it, there is one guideline which says, well, states should uh, exchange information, experiences, share experiences uh, in the implementation of the guidelines. And in Switzerland, we are trying to promote this dialogue. We organized uh, a year ago, together with Finland, uh, a workshop at European level to uh, exchange information on the implementation of the 21 guidelines, for instance. That's great. And also, I'm, I may say, I'm, wait, I'm waiting that you you mentioned the, your highlight project in in Switzerland. Oh on yes, that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it because I was just worried to, to speak too long, but it was on my list. Uh, sorry about that. Indeed, indeed. Uh, so Switzerland also um, very much supports the new uh, space safety program of ESA of the European Space Agency uh, and is uh, actually the lead uh, contributor in the Adrios 
a mission, which is an active debris removal mission, which will be led by a Swiss uh, company. Uh, and, and Switzerland in this program is also supporting other uh, segments of this program, like uh, SSA, uh, like also the CRIM uh, project for uh, automated uh, collision avoidance uh, it's in orbit. So indeed, Switzerland is supporting, uh, like through diverse um, uh, initiatives or, or programs, uh, activities is supporting the the long-term sustainability of space activities, and in particular, the implementation of the Twenty One Guidelines. Great, and I'm not. I mean, I'm not a government employee, so I can mention Clear Space uh, for their activities yeah. here by na by name and sending our best regards to to Luzon. Um, so let's let's pick some questions from from the audience. Um, one come, came in from from Dieter Dambik Dambit Biet. I hope I pronounced it right. What ha happened after the draft voluntary international code of conduct Council of the European Union, um, i.e., revised? draft code of conduct to the outer space activity of 11th October 2010. Difficult to find on the web where it leads to after the draft. Any idea? On... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can okay. give a bit of, of insight on that. Thank you. Because I followed this project for Switzerland indeed uh, okay. at that time. And it started, I think there was uh, there were several drafts uh, in a row because the European Union was consulting uh, partners uh, around the world. Um, so I think there was three drafts which were submitted uh, or presented to uh, the UN General Assembly for uh, information, for comment, for information. And... Um, and then in 2012, uh, the European Union presented officially um, a draft to the international community, and that happened physically in Vienna in Kapur's room, meeting room, in June 2012. And from that time uh, till uh, 2015, there were um, several inter, inter uh, multilateral consultations. Uh, organized by the European Union and where they invited all countries, uh, inter all interested countries to discuss the draft. So the draft sort of evolved mm -hmm. over the years after this uh, between 12 and 15. And, um, and in 15, there was a final conference to uh, finalize the code of conduct um, and where the EU um, has hoped to gain a lot of uh, support by other countries. Um, but unfortunately, um, it was not, it did not succeed in the sense that uh, uh, not all countries uh, accepted to uh, support the text. Okay. okay. Good. Uh, the, another one came in from Sajal uh, Sharma. Do you believe the big satellite programs like Starlink can be a threat to space sustainability? Mayor specifically, should there be some sort of mechanism to progressively bring down the number of objects launched in orbits around Earth? Mm -hmm. I think that's... Mm -hmm. I mean, Thank you. Just, just a, com a comment uh, on that. Yeah. Um, we will... Um, it's in our our outlook or on, on future events. Um, there, there's one event also uh, uh, Professor Schneeknecht might be interested in, which I'm uh, set up together with, with Professor Mori Baja on our, especially those, those topics to seeing it also from different angles. But please, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your, your um, thoughts on that. <laughs> Thanks very much. No, absolutely. I, I, I think this is a topic which, which I mean, the large constellation projects, um, obviously they, they they need to be addressed at multilateral level. That's a kind of activity which, because it, it's, it's certainly a change of paradigm. You, we have a moment, at the moment uh, 2,600 operational satellites, and suddenly there are plans for adding uh, not even hundreds, but thousands of satellites for the same constellation. Mm -hmm. And this poses the risk, for instance, to uh, overpopulate specific areas uh, or orbital areas, orbital regions. Uh, so. I believe that's that's something which needs, but that's my personal uh, uh, belief. I'm not speaking as chair of STSC here, um, but my personal belief is that we 
this kind of, 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 of new type of activities need to be discussed at least uh, at COPOS to see, to, to study together among all uh, space actors what the challenges are, uh, what the, 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 which problem can arise and what could be done to somehow limit the consequences, if any, right? So I, I think uh, 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 that's, that's uh, important, yes. I mean, I just can second our Sajal for this question because we see Elon um, sending up R60 or 55 R60 satellites each launch or he, he puts up and uh, I mean, you mentioned earlier the difficulties are in the in the progress of, of your, your uh, diplomatic discussions or multilateral discussions mm -hmm. you have and we just have to deal with the facts then and that at one stage are, I think we we can run in, into a huge problem and uh, a global problem. And I mean, I can say that as a non-politician, as, as free press here, mm -hmm. um, that we have to be aware of that. Good. Anything else from your end to add? Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, this one, yes, if I may, I have it. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. I take one or two minutes because this morning I was reading um, a, a new declaration by the, the General Assembly, which was adopted yesterday, 21st of September. It's a declaration on the commemoration of the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. So there is a very nice uh, speech by the Secretary General of the UN. And in this declaration, adopted by all member states of the United Nations by consensus, I think there is a beautiful sentence that I find very appropriate in our discussion, and I will read it to you. Our challenges are interconnected and can only be addressed through reinvigorated multilateralism. So we need multilateralism to address the upcoming, the present and future challenges, and they are interconnected. That's why we need to work together. Absolutely. No, that's wonderful that you say that because our, earlier this year, uh, when I spoke with, with Niklas Hetman, he pointed out the uh, concept of multilateralism, uh, still a, a, a hard, difficult word to say, but our, uh, as, a, as a method to, to address these topics. Hmm. Great. I think we are running out of time uh, a bit. I'm afraid that we have to come to an end uh, with that. So um, even so, I would enjoy our, our talking uh, with you. And I think it was very ins ins inspir inspir inspiring. Um, uh, but be sure that in our upcoming Space Cafes, in I our magazine, we will, um, we will continue. We can still hear you. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, no, you're back. We can still hear you. And you're back. You, so. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen me. <laughs> I can, yeah, I I've seen me too. <laughs> yeah. No, but be, be sure that we will uh, continue with the, uh, with the topics of space security, sustainability, because it's, and it's more than close to our heart. And mm. if our production team can get up the, the, the slides, or thank you. Our, in light of the partnership with the Moon Dialogues, I'm pleased to announce uh, the next two sessions on the on this Thursday, on the 24th, about re registration me mechanism for the Moon, and uh, the next Thursday, on the 1st of October, about the sustainable lunar surface infrastructure. And last week, we an made an announcement of a new series of our space cafes, and it's called Moriba's Vox Populi. Our conversation where Professor Moriba Ja will have with high level people on space, another difficult word, environmentalism, and on space or security um, and space safety. So that would be an interesting one to join. Uh, it will be an unscripted dialogue uh, with relevant people with different angles into the topic. So, because I think. One thing is very clear, uh, no panel helps us where everybody sings the same song and said, oh yeah, space is great, thank you. Yeah, next one. Um, I think we, we have to bring people together that have different opinions. And if you know, and I know you, Natalia, know um, Moriba, um, if or the audience know Moriba, he is able to bring these people together. That will happen on the 8th of October as part of the World Space Week. So our next webinars are on the 29th. So next week, I have the honor to talk with Dr. Bavi Yala from the IDA Science and Technology Policy Institute on China's recent 
commercial space uh, developments. On the 6th of October, I will speak with Fahad Al-Meiri, the acting executive director of the space sector in the UAE Space Agency about the wider UAE space economy as UAE became an, a, a global player in space as well. And on, a, on 13th of October, I will talk with Juan del, uh, del Dalmau, the president of the International Space University. And for me as an ISU alumni, it will be a great pleasure to have a chat with Juan about space education. All events are online on Eventbrite. And as always, we would like to hear your feedback. Uh, so please check in with us on Twitter, on Facebook or LinkedIn. Don't forget to sign up to our daily or bi-weekly newsletters. If you like to treat yourself with something special, become a Space Watcher today and your support will help us to continue our independent journalism for the news and these web talks. Take your credit card and visit our shop at shop.spacewatch.global. Thank you all very much for your interest today and thank you Natalia for your exciting talk and being my guest and Thanks again to my entire team behind the scenes for doing that great job week by week again. I hope you all would stay safe and stay healthy. Thanks for joining us. I hope to see you next week. And in the meantime, visit our website and follow us on social media. And don't forget, become a space watcher. Thank you. Natalia, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye. All the best. Bye. Keep going. Ciao. Yeah, thank Ciao. you. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you. Bye.